Jack Straw, um, yesterday must have brought back some vivid memories of that day in 2001. What stood out for you personally? Yesterday or in 2001? Well, when you think back to 2001, what stands no, out? I mean, it was, it, what stands out is simply the, the, the way that everything changed in an instant. Um, the period really between the collapse of the Berlin Wall and after things had stabilised, and certainly the relative stabilisation in the Balkans, and September the 10th, 2001, had been a pretty calm one uh, internationally. So nothing, not a huge amount was going on. Uh, suddenly all that changed, uh, and particularly for the Americans, uh, because they uh, had become very used over decades and decades to seeing their mainland territory as completely inviolable to foreign enemies. And indeed, there'd been no attack on the US mainland since the British Navy uh, and Marines attacked Washington DC and burnt the White House, but that was in 1812. So it really was a really deep trauma. And that led uh, to the atmosphere in which the decisions were made, not only uh, in respect of uh, the invasion of Afghanistan, but subsequently in respect yeah. of Iraq. Did you, and then, sorry, go on. I, I, was going, I wanted to ask, on that day, did you fear that London would also be a target oh, at that time? For sure, yes, of course. Um, and uh, I don't even remember, but uh, air traffic was closed down. We were really very worried indeed because these guys had the capability to hijack four passenger planes and have trained pilots to run into the World Trade Center, uh, the uh, Pentagon, uh, and what they were hoping was either the White House or uh, Capitol Hill. They could easily have done that in London, but for example, taken out Canary Wharf uh, and uh, the whole of uh, the Palace of Westminster House of Commons. So we were extremely worried uh, about it, indeed. Um, I mean, yeah. Let's let, let's talk let's talk about what's happened since. And obviously, the most present issue is Afghanistan. It's obviously early days there, but do you believe the Taliban when they say that they're going to be different this time? Well, I think they'll be a bit different uh, because in the last twenty years. Um, the, majority, the vast majority of people in Afghanistan, particularly women, but very many men as well, have learned to enjoy their freedoms. Um, and they're going to be resisting to having those taken away. Also, the country is far more reliant on the West than ever it was. I mean, just for example, there were virtually no mobile telephones there 20 years ago. Everybody's going to got a mobile telephone now, and that requires uh, uh, reliance on overseas technology. They'll also be under pressure, not only from the West, but also from Russia and China. And although Russia and China want to make a point against the West, they are also petrified about Islamic, uh, Islamic extremism in their own countries, as well as in neighboring Afghanistan. So they will be under greater pressure. But the question is, have they feel like changed their spots? I mean, my instinct is they, they haven't. So they'll be that their instinct will be to do what they did before. A key to how they behave is the attitude of Pakistan. And it's not often sufficiently discussed this. But just bear in mind that the intelligence, the inter-services intelligence directorate of Pakistan, part of their, their defense operation, has been up to its neck in ventriloquizing yep. and supporting uh, the Taliban over decades. So their attitude matters as well. What would you, what would you do about Pakistan then? I mean, what, <laughs> how can the West use its influence in this respect? Uh, with difficulty, but, but I mean, part, partly listen to them and take their advice. I mean, they're, 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 and because after all, the reason they have this extraordinarily ambiguous relationship with the uh, Taliban and with other extremists on, on their northwest frontier is, be, is, is, is not necessarily because the, the very modern people in Lahore and Islamabad and Karachi uh, support them, but they're scared of them. And it's about how you, as it were, tame this tiger 
So listen to them. I mean, one of the mistakes we did make, which I now recognize but very few of us saw at the time, uh, back in 2001, was in having no political route out of its defeat for the Taliban uh, and for those forces who supported them. Uh, and coupled with that, we decided to conflate counter-terrorist strategy, which is absolutely right, with a counter-narcotic strategy, which frankly was a, a bridge too far, which was taking away the livelihood of uh, people whilst you were also trying to get them on the side on counter-terrorism. Um, and so we need to learn from those lessons, uh, but also be tough with them. Briefly, if I may, um, is the biggest lesson that we should learn from this that uh, our approach to tackling Islamist terror has failed and they've won because we focused on the military when perhaps we needed to do more to focus on uh, what I think Tony Blair this week described as the ideology, winning hearts and minds to the idea that the West way of life, democracy and so on, is better than the alternative offered by Islamists. The, I mean, I don't think it's that black and white. Um, in order to get Help the people to listen uh, and and reach their hearts and minds. In that situation, you had to at least push the the terrorists to a draw. I mean, a lot of parallels here with Northern Ireland, um, because as long as I mean these they're killers. Uh, leave aside their ideology, and as long as they think they're winning, um, okay. they won't bother to listen. So, but we certainly should have done much much more on hearts and minds.